In the depths of the sea, where the darkness rules with the abyss of mystery, there's one predator that silently waits for its prey, and once it gets closer, snap. We like to call these sea maniacs the killer whales, also known as the orcas. These marine mammals are apex predators and can hunt everything from fish to great white sharks, relying on their highly developed echolocation and complex language to coordinate with other members of their pod. As they are incredibly popular and most widely distributed of all whales and dolphins, they can be found in every single ocean. But that's not the only thing to know about these insane predators, and there's so much more to delve into. Orcas, often known as killer whales, are the largest of the dolphins and one of the most powerful predators on the planet. They are easily identified by their striking black and white hue. Orcas, as they are highly intelligent and sociable, create a wide range of communicating sounds, and each pod has distinct noises that its members can distinguish even from a distance. They communicate and hunt by echolocation, creating sounds that travel underwater until they hit objects, then bounce back, indicating their location, size, and shape. They're called killer whales even though they've never attacked humans. Interesting, right? In fact, the killer whale was originally known as a whale killer, since ancient sailors saw them hunting in groups to catch enormous whales. Orcas are now considered as one of the most extensively distributed creatures on the globe, inhabiting every body of ocean water. These whales are also the largest members of the dolphin family. Whales are often considered bigger than the females, but they vary in size and weight depending on the type of orca. According to SeaWorld, the largest orca ever recorded was 32 feet, which is 9.8 meters long, and weighed 22,000 pounds or 10,000 kilograms. Well, that's longer and heavier than the majority of motorhomes. Orcas are distinguished by their long dorsal fin, which is actually the fin on the back of the animal, and black and white appearance. The black and white hue aids in their concealment by masking their silhouette in the water. A patch of grey just behind the dorsal fin is known as a saddle because it resembles a riding saddle. The body of an orca is cylindrical and tapers at both ends to generate a hydrodynamic shape. This form, along with the orca's great size and strength, makes it one of the fastest marine mammals, capable of exceeding 30 knots, approximately 34 miles per hour or 56 kilometers per hour. Besides that, orcas also have enormous teeth that can grow to be 4 inches or 10 centimeters long. With all of these physical characteristics, orcas are known to be the apex predators and on top of the food chain. As it's said that no other sea animal hunts these giants, if there's one thing on this planet that can hunt these mammals down, it would be none other than the human beings. But apart from that, orcas are the only mammals of the sea that can even hunt large whales, which are often described as the biggest mammals of the deep waters. Orcas, or killer whales, eat a wide variety of prey, including fish, seals, marine birds, and squid. They can also take down larger whales, such as minka whales, and are the only species known to prey on great white sharks. According to a chapter on orcas in the book Primates and Cetaceans, killer whales have even been documented to kill swimming deer and moose. These intelligent creatures also have echolocation, which uses sound waves and clicks to check what echoes bounce off of surfaces to find fish or other life. In dark waters, echolocation is quite useful allowing them to see up to 152 meters or 500 feet ahead of them. Orcas use sound to seek down prey, and they can hear frequencies ranging from 31 to 120 kilohertz. They are easily the top predator in the water due to their multiple senses and highly powerful bodies. 
Killer whales hunt in groups made up of family members because they live together in pod-like structures, much like a pack of wolves but in the sea. Orca pods typically have up to 15 members, although at times of congregation, such as seasonal breeding, they may cluster in larger numbers. Another reason that could encourage orcas to stay together is the availability of food, which is considered to be the most important aspect of their lives. These pods use a variety of techniques to overwhelm prey, including herding, striking with their tails, and creating enormous waves. Orcas communicate with one another using noises, and their intelligence allows them to have a wide range of vocalizations, with some even learning to imitate humans and say hello. These highly social mammals communicate with one another using calls, whistles, and pulses. Older females lead the pod at the top of the social structure, while males may occasionally join to reproduce. This can also be considered as some of their techniques to prey on another creature in the sea. Some orcas pursue their prey in order to herd them into a certain region. They've also been seen using waves to knock animals off of icebergs so that their members can capture them as they fall into the ocean. Killer whales use the other members of their pod to boost their chances of catching meals by isolating and overpowering their prey. But have they ever attacked any human? There is no evidence that an orca has ever killed a human in the wild. This is due to the fact that humans are not included in their natural diet, which means that humans are something orcas will pass by when it comes to catching prey or feeding themselves. That's great, isn't it? But an orca may occasionally mistake a human for something they do eat, such as a seal. So better not get too close to them. During the Lofoten Masters Surfing Competition in Norway in 2017, an orca was recorded on camera charging toward a surfer. The orca appeared to withdraw from the attack shortly before making contact. According to a Facebook post by the Norwegian Orca Survey, the orca presumably realized the surfer was not a seal at the last second. According to the Associated Press via the Seattle Times, a 12-year-old child was bumped by a killer whale in Ketchikan, Alaska in 2005 in what may have been an abortive attack which was similar to the surfer in Norway or merely curiosity on the part of the orca. According to the Associated Press, a surfer was bitten in California in the early 1970s, which is the only somewhat well-documented incident of a wild orca attacking a human. Captive orcas, on the other hand, have attacked and murdered humans. Although wild killer whales do not purposefully hurt humans, they have been known to assault boats. According to BBC News, there were numerous reports of orcas slamming into and damaging sailing boats off the coast of Spain and Portugal beginning in the summer of 2020. The majority of the attacks were carried out by three juvenile male orcas, and marine biologists studying the occurrences believe that the young males were playing with the boats by targeting the rudders and pushing them about. But did you know how exactly these sea maniacs live their lives in the pod? Orcas are highly social creatures that reside in family groupings called pods, which can include up to 50 members. These pods are made up of matrilines, which are connected mums and their descendants. A male orca will stay with its mother for life, whereas daughters may leave after having their own calves. Pods frequently have their own distinct communication cries or dialects, but they will associate with other pods and create even bigger transient groups. A female killer whale will give birth to one offspring at a time every three to ten years. The gestation period usually lasts for around 17 months. Orcas work together to take care of the young, and other females in the pod will often help with the rearing. These female killer whales have an average lifespan of 50 years, but some individuals are estimated to have lived up to 100 years. Males live shorter lives, with an average lifespan of 29 years and a maximum lifespan of 60 years. 
Apart from this, orcas are also known to be the most widely distributed mammals, other than humans and possibly brown rats. They can be found in every ocean on the planet and have adapted to a variety of conditions, from the warm seas near the equator to the cold waters of the North and South Poles. Orcas have been observed traveling large distances. According to one research, a group of orcas moved from the waters outside Alaska to those near central California, which is a distance of more than 1,200 miles or 1,900 kilometers. Now, you might be wondering if there are any different types of killer whales or orcas. Well, let us tell you all about that. All orcas are officially classified as a single species, known as Orcanus orca. There are observable differences between populations and biologists have discovered numerous distinct forms, known as ecotypes, that may represent different species or subspecies. Their ecotypes differ in terms of size, diet and behavior. There are currently 10 ecotypes that have been described as five in the Northern Hemisphere and five in the Southern Hemisphere. Scientists have detected resident orcas in the North Pacific, which have small ranges and specialize in capturing fish. The North Pacific is also home to big killer whales, sometimes known as transient orcas. These orcas travel long distances in search of animals like seals and whale calves. This area is also home to offshore orcas, they dwell far from the coasts and have been observed feeding on fish and sharks, but nothing is known about them. The Northern Hemisphere is also home to North Atlantic Type 1 and Type 2 killer whales. Type 1 orcas are generalist eaters who have been seen eating fish and seals in locations like Norway and Scotland. Type 2 orcas are more scarce and mostly feed on other whales and dolphins. In the Southern Hemisphere, there are Type A, Type B, large ones, Type B, small ones, Type C, and Type D, killer whales. Let's just take a look at where these orcas can be found. Type A orcas migrate into and out of Antarctic waters in response to the migration of their primary prey, minka whales. Because they hunt seals in Antarctic pack ice, Type B, the big ones, are often known as pack ice orcas. Killer whales of type B, small ones, commonly known as gerlach orcas, have been observed eating penguins, but their full diet is unclear. The same is true for type C and type D orcas, despite the fact that both have been spotted consuming fish. Type C, also known as Ross Sea orcas, are the smallest ecotype and are usually found in eastern Antarctica. Type D, or subantarctic orcas, are extremely rare, and nothing is known about them. If we talk about the numbers of these killer whales, if they're abundant or endangered, then the orcas are currently listed as data deficient by the IUCN, which means its conservation status is unknown. Scientists didn't have enough evidence when it was last assessed in 2017 because of confusion about its taxonomic categorization, whether orcas should be classified as subspecies or species. The killer whale is plentiful and widely spread as a single species, according to the IUCN. However, they still face threats from human activities and some regional populations, such as the orcas dependent on bluefin tuna in the Strait of Gibraltar, have declined significantly. Human civilizations kill orcas both directly and indirectly all throughout the world. According to the IUCN, they are still killed in limited numbers for food or to control their population in Greenland, Japan, Indonesia and the Caribbean. According to the IUCN, contaminants in the water and oceans like chemicals and oil represent a threat to orcas, as do boat interference, overfishing and other disruptions to their food supply, and climate change. The Marine Mammal Protection Act protects killer whales in the United States. Southern resident killer whales are also designated as endangered under the Endangered Species Act due to hazards such as boat traffic noise, 
and a fall in the salmon population, which is often considered as their favorite meal. The MMPA also classifies as depleted a subpopulation of transient killer whales, or AT. Following a significant fall in the aftermath of the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill in Prince William Sound, Alaska, the population has shrunk to just seven individuals. Now that's quite alarming. But the good news is that there are different platforms that are putting their immense efforts in order to save these amazing creatures, like Save Our Orcas and Whale and Dolphin Conservation. These platforms are constantly engaged in different stuff as to how these orcas can be saved from going extinct, which is actually a great thing. But did you know that there are some famous orcas as well? Not that they appear on a TV show, but these orcas have been known to many. Tilikum, a Sea World orca, was the subject of the 2013 documentary Blackfish, which took a critical look at killer whales in captivity. Tilikum was responsible for three human killings, including the 2010 death of Sea World trainer Dawn Branshaw. The documentary sparked public outrage against Sea World and the Marine Park Company stated in 2016 that it would discontinue its killer whale breeding program, as previously reported by Live Science. Tilikum, 36, died of a bacterial illness at SeaWorld in 2017. Kiko, another well-known captive orca, portrays Willy in the 1993 film Free Willy. Kiko was kept in a Mexican marine park until the film's premiere, when an international effort was begun to return him to the wild Icelandic waters where he was seized when he was about two years old. Kiko was trained to capture wild fish before being released off Iceland's shore in 2002. He swam to the Norwegian coast but died of pneumonia 18 months later at the age of 27. Let's have a quick fun fact session about the orcas or the killer whales. Orcas cannot smell. Orcas lack an olfactory system, which means they are unlikely to have a sense of smell. While this may appear to be a disadvantage, it actually makes a lot of sense. Unlike sharks who use smell to locate prey, orcas utilize echolocation, producing sounds and listening for echoes to determine the presence of objects or creatures in their surroundings. All dolphins and most toothed whales lack this smelling mechanism, so orcas are not alone in this shortcoming. Orcas have big brains. Orcas, or the killer whales, have the second largest brains of any marine animal, after sperm whales. They can weigh up to 15 pounds. Some scientists utilize brain size, specifically the ratio of brain weight to body weight, to estimate IQ. According to that metric, the orca's brain is 2.5 times larger than the average of other species. However, because of their excellent social, language, and echolocation abilities, orcas' intellect is thought to much exceed what their brain size predicts. Orcas go through menopause. Many members of the animal kingdom are capable of reproducing until they die, but some species are exceptions to this, including the orca and, of course, humans. But why would a species stop producing midlife, if you ask? For the orca, it has to do with the social practice of staying in pods. Because both sons and daughters remain in the pod throughout adulthood, older females are increasingly related to everyone in the pod. Sharing genes with so many pod members is a good reason to stop breeding and instead focus on supporting the pod by guiding and teaching the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. And that's all for today's video. Thanks for exploring the fascinating biology of killer whales with us. If you enjoyed diving into the science behind the life of killer whales, don't miss out on more captivating content about the interesting stuff of this planet. Subscribe now to stay tuned for more scientific wonders.